I have this old window and as you can see it's actually frosted glass and the glass is still one nice piece but the frame is completely rotten and needs replaced so that's what I'm going to do. So first things first is just to get uh, everything stripped out and then I can see where there's a ridge in here for where the frame's going to go and I can measure everything up and yeah, we'll see from there. So. So I've got my archaeological tools and I'm just going to dust out all the dirt and stuff and then I can measure up what size I need to cut this up to. So you can see there's a track here and the old window uh, originally would have, from what I can tell, to actually get the window into this track there wouldn't have been a back piece here, there would have just been a front piece. The window would have been butted up and then the would have been skimmed up against the window to give it a good seal. Which means one thing, it means I've got a hole and if I want to put a window in, I can't have the window hole. So we're on the other side of the window now and you can see again that track quite well. We'll use this room. So this is where the boiler used to be for the house, but now we just have the tumble dryer in here. And check for square then. And that square. And now I can just do some crude maths to see how much timber I'll actually need. So this is 605 and this is 455. So we'll round those up to 610 and 460. And we add those. And that gives us 1070. And then we times by that by 2 to get the total perimeter, which is equal to 2140, which means we need essentially a 2.2 meter length of timber, and that will do. So I've got a few lengths of this timber, and it's definitely totals up because if I split it down the middle, I can get 245s, yep, and it is. 3 mil thick, which should be plenty thick, so that's great. So I need 2.2 meters worth. So I've got three lengths of timber here, each one uh, longer or shorter than the last. So I need one that is uh, 661 centimeters and one that is 46 centimeters. And you always want to use up the smallest pieces first, the one that's exactly close. Because if we're cutting a piece out of this one, why would I take it out of this one if I have a piece that is this size? It's just maximization. So I need 61 centimeters. So this one is 90, so that's a bit excessive. This one is 64, so I'll use this one for the 60. And then this one here I can use for the 40 because it is a usable length. 
suppose these bits are a bit rough, so I'm just going to give them a new clean straight edge with the hand plane. Alright, so now I've got the table saw set up with the extractor and I'm just going to chop these down on one side and then I'll be able to measure and cut again. I need to turn it on. pieces down the middle so that I end up with two pieces. So we're at the window here and I have a piece that I've cut down and the most important thing is I'm just here to check does this piece actually fit in this track because if it doesn't that's a bit of a hmm because yeah so let's see here and yep it fits in nice and well there fits in fine yep the length of it and a bit long there so I'll trim a bit off plan is to make the window as one whole frame as one chunk but the problem is normally you just shove it in from the back and then screw it into the wall or whatever but the problem is I've got a U track which means the, the window track is like this where I have cement here the gap here for the window and then cement there so I can't just slide it in because that's on all sides so my thought is I'm gonna make a full frame then after assembling it and making sure it's all up at 90 degrees, I'll cut it in half and then I'll take this half, wedge it in and then take this half, trim a tiny bit off the edge there and there, wedge it in and then I'll have it in place with a tiny gap like that and then I can just wedge some wee pieces in here and here and glue them in and theoretically I should have a nice solid window. So now I just need to trim the uh, two side pieces to length because they were slightly too tall and then I can cut the housing grooves or rabbit groove or dado depending where you are. <laughs> So I have these two pieces spaced 600 millimeters apart, which is the distance uh, or the width I want the window to be. So now I just need to measure the distance from inside these half laps to see how long I need to cut my piece. So this one 58, which is right because these should be one centimeter, and this one 
50 yen. Perfect. So this window is finished now, this is all, uh, this is the exact size and I just need to cut a rabbit or a dado or a rebate around the edge so I can inset this panel. Hmm, I see a bit of an issue here. This fits inside with lots of room. Oh great. Hmm. So, the <laughs> oh, this is kind of funny, but actually, surprisingly, it makes things a lot easier. So, what happened was, when I measured up, this is the actual size of the frame. This is the size I need it. This is the size I... So, when I... the inside needs to be 60, yep. And it needs to be 45 tall, yep, that's alright. But the problem was, the frame I've made is only... Uh, three... Uh, three centimetres thick. But the original one was something like six centimeters, so it means that the original one, the glass panel, was being inset in the wood. But in this one, it isn't. It's just the window for the opening is quite small. It could be bigger, but it's all right, no problem. So I've just got this square stock now. I'm just going to cut it to length and stick it in round the rim and create just a ledge, and that'll be it. Nice and easy. I'm going to cut down this piece here and then that will give me enough trim pieces. Before I assemble the frames, I'm gonna glue and just pin on these little bits here on the uh, sides here. So, glue. I'm using exterior wood glue because it's a window, so it's definitely going to be outside. Cool. And more importantly, it was free. Who doesn't like free stuff? So there we go, and I'll just hammer in these pins. And there we go. Already. I normally do my clamping inside in the house because that's the only place where it's warm enough for the glue to set properly. But I thought, you know, it's a lovely day, sure, I'll bring it outside. So I have the window here and it's all glued up and on the inside I have two battens here but on the top and bottom I don't have any and that's because I was initially going to cut them and glue them on and then glue the whole thing together but it's better to have a perfect tight fit and so to do that I've just left it and now I'm going to pin them in and as the old saying goes the best way to measure isn't to measure but is to mark I'll do it this way because that's better. Because it's flatter. But just this way. Mark a wee bit. And I'll go cut. So with the cut made to the trim piece, I can now jam it in. I can see it's a bit loose. And I want to see, is it a better fit up here at the top? Uh, it's about the same. Sure, I'll just pop it down here. That's where I cut it. And then flip her up. And 
Now add the glue, stick her on, and then pin her in place. So we just fun. Oh, it's tight squeeze. Or, whoops, nearly forgot. Put a bit in here. And don't forget to get some on your clothes. And on your hands. And then pop it in. And then I'm on the way down. There we go. Give it a wiggle. Put the glue in. And then get it flush. And pin it down. See up the other end. Here we have my state of the art painting booth with the super high tech uh, ventilation system, which has been around for millennia, known as the wind. Yes, the wind. Replacing the air in 50 cubic meters per second. I don't know, there's a lot of wind, so that's good. So, uh, this is the window. I have it propped up on these triangular supports, which allows me to paint the whole window at it in one straight session. And that is excellent because I'm using oil paint. Because it's exterior, the best thing to use is oil paint. And oil paint has to be cleaned off brushes using diesel or paint thinner. Uh, and I just usually use diesel because it's easier to use. And just soak it in it for a week or so and then I'll leave the brush and it's fine. So I'll paint the top and the sides and then flip it over and paint the bottom on the underside. All done. All painted and glued and everything. Now I just have to do the horrible job of chopping it up. But first, check the glass. So here's the glass panel and... It fits, woohoo! Now oh, it's actually quite a bit of room. So I'll just use some shims, and if I shim it properly, then it should be as such, nice and frosted, can't see me. Now, I've incurred a bit of a problem, so I've been thinking about this for a day or two, and I've realised that my original idea to cut the window exactly in half, as such, and put it into the hole, isn't going to work, because this here is too long, that's not going to fit in. So I can either cut the window in three pieces or I can cut it in two pieces so that it ends up like this. So the importance of this is I've got one full length piece here and one not full length piece. So it means I can put it in the window at an angle and then put it upright and then do the same with the other one, hopefully, and they will fit together to make the window.
So I've cut right along in here, but I haven't, I didn't cut out through here because I knew it wouldn't be any good. So there's a tiny butt joint here, and that's the only thing holding it together currently, and a tiny bit of paint. So I'm going to put it on the ground here, put some weight on it, and it should just break nice and easily. Or not, because I've built it too well. Let's try like this. There we go. So now I have two pieces. So with the window now nicely in two halves, it should, theoretically speaking, just slot nicely into where it's going to go. Mm. Apparently not. Not going to work. Great. It hits the ledge up here at the top. So I'm just going to have to chisel that out or cut up the frame. And I want the frame to be as strong as possible. So I'm going to try chiseling it out instead of chopping up the frame. So let's try the frame now. Oh, tight, tight, that's good. There we go. So it hooks in the ledge, and then up at the top, it's been removed so it can hook in and then just slide in. So that one fits really well. And if it were possible to do the other like that, it would be great. But it isn't possible because this ledge is in the way, but also this ledge. So it appears that I'm going to have to try and remove basically both ledges to get the next piece in. The frame is in, as you can see, but uh, fits actually quite well now that I've got it in. Very solid, but the only problem is it did take a lot of uh, chiseling to get out to get in. So I basically removed this whole lip and then on the top removed the whole lip. I'm going to take it apart, I'm going to put loads of glue in and then it'll hopefully set in place and then I'll dry some screws into the wall to definitely keep it in place. There we go, nice and tight fit. Uh, secure the frame in place. I'm gonna drill some holes and then put some screws in. And I used a couple of pieces of cardboard just to get it up to the right height and then now I've got two little blocks of wood right where I need them at the right height for the window so I can lift out the window and tack them in place or I can drop them completely right so now I have the wee spacers on the bottom and I'll just be able to lift the pin up into the frame 
and it should be in the right place now. There we go, yep, that's in the right height. There we go, there's one. And the next. And one in the middle. So there we go, the window is all finished, nice and solid. And as you can tell, it's frosted glass for a toilet. So, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I have a range of other strange wild things which I like to make, and take a peek.